afternoon. <clears throat> it's good to be back up here for church. <clears throat> I had COVID for a couple of weeks and then I just didn't feel like coming, so but I'm glad I'm feeling better. I'm glad I'm over it. And we've already prayed for those who are still suffering from it. And I know the Lord can take that and just wipe it off the map, just like He can wipe this storm that's hitting the coast now. He can wipe that off the map. And I'm asking that, and I'm hoping there are others who are also standing up and doing that. So, um, glasses on, so I see what I'm doing. I have a little list of things. My friend didn't want to work this afternoon, so I'm having to use my laptop, so y'all bear with me a little bit. Um, <clears throat> first thing we want to do, as always, you got a red rag? Okay. Um, this red rag, red rag are, these are our prayer cloths. And for those of you that don't know this, that it represents the blood of Jesus. And what we do is we start each service this way, but we also use them for prayer cloths. If somebody needs prayer and we go see them, we'll take them on, or you can come by and pick one up. But anyway, let's do this. We raise the rag over our head and we say, Hallelujah! 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 Praise Thank the you Lord. that we live in a place where we can go to church when we want to. And I pity the ones that don't take that opportunity, that they're too afraid. I, I, I feel bad for them that they're too afraid. But anyway, I, I pray that the fear leaves them, that the Lord just wipes it away from them. So, our announcements. We take prayer requests, and we love to take prayer requests. So, <clears throat> if you have one, uh, you can come by the shop and see us and bring it to us. You can send it to my Facebook page or the shop page, Living Water Coffee House, or the ministry page, which is 3 and one Motorcycle Ministries. Send it to any one of those and I will get it. Um, you can call. The shop number is 334-335-2410. Or you can call my cell phone, which is 334-546-8312. Any way you want to get it. Write it down, drop it in the mailbox outside and I'll get it however you want to do it. We want to hear your prayer request because we love to pray for people and we love to pray with people. <clears throat> we also take donations. If you would like to donate cash or send us a PayPal payment or a check, we welcome any one of those things. We take, um, I, I would say we take almost anything. I issued a challenge a few weeks ago for somebody to donate something that I couldn't find a way to use and I haven't had anybody to take me up on the chance. But if the offer still stands. If you want to donate, we will write you a tax receipt. Um, <clears throat> the PayPal is, the, the email account for PayPal is, um, I think it's, anyway, it's on the, face, the, the ministry Facebook page. There's a link to it. I think it's, it's three in one at gmail.com, uh, I think. But anyway, the link is on the Facebook page and on the website. Um, we have Bibles that need homes. So if you need a Bible or if you know someone that needs a Bible or if you just want to have one in your car to give, if you find somebody, please come get them. We've got lots of them. If you've got Bibles you're not using, maybe it's not the right size or the print's not the right size or whatever, if you've got some that you are not using, bring them to us and we will find homes for them. Um, but again, as I said, we will take almost anything. We will take food, clothing, uh, furniture, um, to all, just I can't imagine anything that we could take. We, we may not ourselves know somebody that uses it, but we work with lots of other groups and we will get with somebody and find somebody that can use what you've got. So <clears throat> if you've got something you want to donate, get in touch with us. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have Bible study. We've start, we finally got back on trying to get back on schedule. We started back this last week. We have Bible study on Tuesday night at six and Saturday night at six. And starting the second full week in September, we're going to start having we're going to start back having our ladies Bible study. Monday night will be at six, and Wednesday will be at ten a.m. And if you're interested, get with me. I'll give you a link so you can buy the book. It's a Joyce Meyer book. Um, and it talks about how godly women are to, to behave. I mean, it's characteristics of godly women. <coughs> For right now, our open hours are from about 8 till about 12 or 1, according to, you know, if we're busy, 
we're going to stay open as long as people are in here. But if I'm not busy, I may close up at 12 and go home. I'm still building my strength back up. Um, we're closed on Thursdays. Uh, I will be closed tomorrow because I have a, an appointment out of town that I have to go to, and it's mid-morning, so I, I didn't see any need in coming first thing and staying open for an hour and then closing. So we won't be here tomorrow, but we will hopefully we'll be here every other day this week that we're supposed to, not Thursday. Um, we're getting ready to mail out the um, September newsletter, um, which we've gotten a lot of good feedback from that. If you are interested in getting a newsletter, it doesn't cost anything, we're glad to send it to you. I just need, need your name and your mail address. And again, same way to send prayer requests, you can call us or drop us by, send us a message, whatever, and I'll be glad to add you to the mailing list. We're glad to send them out. Right now, we're mailing out about 50 every month. And it's just, you know, we have guest speakers write something, and we have, I sometimes write something. We have recipes. We have um, humor. We talk about songs that we're listening to. Um, just all kinds of things. We try to have all the announcements in, and we have our our regular schedule hours, the basic information about the shop. Um, so if you're interested in that, let me know. I'm going to probably be mailing it out Tuesday or Wednesday this week. We do that monthly. Um, our activities norm, on normal months, of course, you know, 2021 20, is turning out to be about like 2020 is not normal. <laughs> but we try to have game night one Saturday night a month. We had game night last night, had a good turnout, and had a lot of fun. We played Sorry three or four times, and the kids love that because they love sending Mama back to the start. So we had a good time with that. We played dominoes. We've got cards. We've got sheets and ladders. We've got a whole shelf of games over there. So, and of course, you're welcome to bring what you want to from home to play. We ask you on game night for everybody to bring something to eat, snacks or sandwiches or something, and then bring what you want to drink, and we all share. Everybody shares. Um, we also have movie night one night a month, and we were supposed to have that this month, but I was sick and didn't get to it. But we have a lot of fun with that. We've got a big old popcorn machine. We make popcorn. We put hot dogs. And um, that's one of our little fundraisers. We sell the popcorn and the hot dogs. You don't have to buy food. If you want to bring your own stuff from home, you can. But it's a family-friendly movie. We have the screen up here behind me on this. And the kids can sit on the floor if they want to. Parents, we've got the chair set up. And it's it's always a lot of fun. We've had some real cute movies. And it's sometimes it's a Disney movie. Sometimes it's another family-friendly. But it is family-friendly movies. I'm not going to show anything that that I wouldn't want to have to, I would want to have to explain to my mother-in-law <laughs> or my mama or my grandchild why I've got something on TV that's not what it's supposed to be. So it is family friendly. We have lots of things going on and we would love for you to come join us anytime you want to. Yes, we sell coffee up here and we have other little snacks and things, but the main reason we are up here is to share Jesus. Um, if you come in and you want to sit all morning and you don't buy things, it does not hurt my feelings. I'm glad to see if you've got something you want to talk about or you need prayer or you just want to come in and visit a while. Um, that's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. Obviously, we'll sell you a cup of coffee if you want it, but don't feel like you've got to do that in order to come participate. We just have a good time, and uh, it's just a place of fellowship. And you can feel the Holy Spirit, I believe, when you come in. Uh, in fact, for those of you that don't know, my husband passed away in the middle of June, and we live in the house that he grew up in. And so you would think if I felt his presence anywhere, I would feel him at our house. But I do not feel him there. I feel him here. In fact, um, I've got his motorcycle vest on one of the chairs, the chair that he sat in. And he, if he's anywhere, he's here. I can feel him here. Um, but... Uh, and I'm not saying that in a bad way at the house. It's just I feel like he loved this place like I did. And so this is where he chooses. This is where he chooses to be. So anyway, saying all that, <clears throat> I've got just a little short thing I want to talk to you about. I participate in a, um, I have a Bible reading app, and it's called Bible.com. And they have devotionals and studies that um, help you keep up, helps you remember to read your Bible every day. And lots of topics and the one that I'm doing now is about the Gospels and I think it's a six month study and I'm reading in Matthew every day I read a chapter of Matthew 
And the other day I read this, and I, I've been thinking about it ever since. So <clears throat> I'm going to read the scripture. It is Matthew 22, and it's verses 1 through 14. And I'm reading in the Christian, Christian Standard Version of the Bible. So Matthew 22, 1 through 14. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables. The kingdom of heaven is like a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to summon those invited to the banquet, but they didn't want to come. So again, he sent out other servants and said, Tell those who were invited, See, I prepared my dinner. My oxen and fatted cattle have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they paid no attention and went away, one to his own farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his servants, mistreated them, and then killed them. The king was enraged, and he sent out his troops, killed the murderers, and burned down the city. Then he told his servants, The banquet is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Go then to where the roads exit the city and invite everyone you find to the banquet. So those servants went out to the roads and gathered everyone they found, both evil and good. The wedding banquet was filled with guests. When the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there who was not dressed for a wedding. So he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? And the man was speechless. Then the king told the attendants, Tie him up hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. So now I'm going to be honest. That that story for a long time was a difficult passage for me to read because I know what it represented. It, re it said it represented the kingdom of heaven, and that sounds like an awfully cruel king to do the things he did. But <clears throat> as I got older, I studied it more, and I realized that the king's wedding supper it wouldn't have been something that just was a surprise. You get up this morning and you hear, okay, you got to be there mid-morning. No. <clears throat> Everybody knew that the king, that the king's son's wedding supper was coming. The king was preparing everything ahead of time to make sure everything was just right. And when it was just right, then they would kill the animals, prepare them, get to have all the food ready, and he would send word out, and everybody would get ready, get their wedding finery on. In other words, the clothes they would wear to a wedding, and they would come. <clears throat> and it was an honor to be invited. I mean, you can just imagine if the, just, I don't know, the governor of the state of Alabama, if her, one of her grandchildren were getting married, and you got an, an invitation in the mail saying, my grandchild's getting married and I want you to show up. Well, that's an honor, especially if you're, you know, not anybody. You know what I'm saying. If you're not some of her family or friends or political people, you're just some random person, you you would think that's a big honor to be invited to that wedding. And back then, that it would be the same way. So the folks knew way ahead of time. The king would have sent word, my son's getting married, and when everything's ready, I'll let you know. So they would have, should have been, <coughs> excuse me, should have been getting ready and preparing and not trying to plan anything that would interfere with that. So for folks not to only refuse to go, and that was what they did. They, they said, I don't care. You can have anything, but I, I don't care. But they mistreated the messengers for the king, from the king. <clears throat> and and they were the, the king's messengers should have been honored for their position because they were the king's messengers. They weren't just some random person on the street. They should have been honored because of who they worked for. <clears throat> and it made me, while I was studying that this week, it made me wonder... What in the world were those guests thinking? What made them so brave that they would be rude and disrespectful to their king who held their lives in his hand? And I, I still don't I still don't know why. I don't know I don't know why they thought that, that was okay. So when he couldn't get the people that he had originally invited, obviously he wanted his party to be a success. So he just sent his messengers out to people pull people off the street. It didn't matter if you were good or bad. Pull them off the street because he wanted a full party because that would be um, a successful party. He wanted his son to he wanted his son to look like he had lots of people that cared about him. 
<clears throat> I mean, you can imagine having a big party and everybody should be excited and only three people show up. That doesn't look like a very good party. It makes you look bad and it makes you feel like you're not the person that you thought you were. <clears throat> so he finally gets enough people in to make the party a success. <coughs> Excuse me. Hold on one second. Just took out this cough. I can't pick it up. He's looking around at all the guests. And I'm sure he's walked around and talked to people and told them how glad he was that they were there. And he sees a man who's not dressed appropriately. And again, you're thinking, well, these people went out into the street. And in one version, it says they were compelled to come in. <clears throat> he saw the man wasn't dressed appropriately. And it made the king mad. And he asked him, he said, how did you even get in here without, when you don't have your wedding clothes on? And he told his, um, he told his, his soldiers to grab him, tie him up, and throw him out into outer darkness. And again, that sounds pretty harsh, but when the servants went out to invite people, they would say, they wouldn't say, come now, they would say, the party is today, come. <laughs> and so everybody would have gone home and bathed and put on their best clothes so that they would represent themselves well. But this man didn't do that. He just showed up. Not, you know, he could have had dirty feet and dirty clothes and not have a robe or anything, not be dressed appropriately. The guest was basically telling the king, I'll come eat your food, but I'm not going to honor your son. I, I don't care anything about you. I'm just coming for the free food. So that makes sense that the king would be angry, that again, he would be being disrespected. <clears throat> and when you think about it, People in England, if they have the opportunity to meet, to be presented to, rather, to be presented to the Queen of England, that is a huge honor. And um, before they're allowed to even go into the room where she is, there are people who tell them, now make sure this is how you curtsy or this is how you bow. And you don't offer your hand to her, you wait for her to extend her hand to you. I mean, there's, there's all kind of things that would be considered bad manners that you wouldn't do. And it, it'd be the same thing here. If we were to go to um, the governor's house or even farther up somewhere in Washington, D.C., where there are high-up government officials, we would be told what we could do and what we couldn't do. First of all, they're going to pat you down, make sure you don't have any weapons, and they're going to make sure you don't have anything on you that's not supposed to be. And they're going to tell you, this is what you do. You wait to be presented with this and that and the other. And that's not necessarily being anything other than respectful to your leader. That's, to me, that's not being, you know, that's not saying that you're not as good as they are. It's just a respect to the authority that that person holds. So it's just nothing but right that you be on your best behavior when you're presented to someone who's in authority. That's just, to me, that's just a grown-up. That's the way they're going to behave. So in that same vein... All of this stuff that that happened to these people, it was not like they didn't know what to expect. They grew up in that area, and they knew what was expected of them. And so they knew how they should behave, but they didn't. They didn't follow protocol or tradition or whatever. They just didn't act like they were supposed to. They, they weren't surprised when they found out about the wedding supper, and they weren't surprised when the king got mad when they didn't come, when they were, had been invited. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the very first line in this scripture says, Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables. The kingdom of heaven is like a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. <clears throat> so what can we learn from this? Well, first, the chosen people are the Jews. Those were the people that God originally set salvation for. Now, I'm not saying even back then he didn't include us, but the first ones to get it should have been the Jewish people because they were his chosen people. They were set aside. They were his special people. And they knew how they were supposed to behave. They knew what scripture said. They knew what prophecy said. And for them not to accept Jesus, that was, that was a slap in God's face. And God is great, is full of grace and merciful but he's also just and expects to be treated with the respect that's due him because he is God. So <clears throat> when the original chosen people 
chose not to believe Jesus was who he was and chose to disrespect him and um, end up killing him, the Gentiles were offered that same gift, because it is a gift. <clears throat> and we, yes, we got special treatment when we were invited in. A grace was extended to us that was originally meant for the Jews. <clears throat> we still have to do our part to behave like we know we're supposed to. If we're Christians, or even if we're not Christians yet, but we've been raised in church, we know oh, at least a little bit about what God has expects of us. I mean, even somebody, I'll use this as an example. Uh, one year, Randy and I <clears throat> were riding in the Christmas parade, and uh, Randy's vest had his chaplain's tag on it because at that time we were riding with another ministry, and Randy, excuse me, Randy was the chaplain, and he had his chaplain tag on, on his vest under his name. <clears throat> and so anybody that knew, of course, if they saw the backpacks, they would know that we were Christians or supposed to be. And he walked up to the front of where the motorcycles were to watch the parade come out. And he's standing there, and there were two or three other men. <clears throat> and you could tell by their backpacks that one of them belonged to a, um, I'll just put a worldly motorcycle club. They, were, they did not get together to do Bible study. They got together to party and drink and do whatever it is that they do, you know, do the things that they do. And they were talking, and one of them was just talking. He wasn't being ugly, he wasn't mad. He was just talking, and he was letting ugly words come out both sides of his mouth. But he was just, that was, he was just talking like a normal talk. And Randy didn't say anything to him. He didn't say, excuse me, I'm a Christian, you're offending me by speaking like that. He was just standing there. <clears throat> he didn't call any attention to himself. But the men, I guess one of them noticed him out of the corners of his eye. And he turned around and looked at Randy and looked down to see what his name was. And then under that, he saw Chapel. And he knew what that meant, even though he was speaking ugly words. <coughs> and as soon as he saw the word Chapel, he looked Randy in the face and said, I am so sorry that I spoke that way. <coughs> Please forgive me. And Randy said, hey, you weren't speaking to me. You, you, know, you weren't saying that to me which was a good response. And, you know, he wasn't telling the guy it was okay, but he was telling him that, you know, it's not bothering me how you're talking because you weren't talking to me. <clears throat> and so that says a lot about most people, even worldly people, if they realize they're in the presence of somebody who lives a Christian lifestyle, not just necessarily a pastor or a preacher or a chaplain or whatever, but that they are living that, they're going to, for the most part, unless they're just so evil they can't stand it, they're going to watch what they say. They're going to try not to say things to be ugly. <clears throat> and so how much more do we who were raised in church or we know a little bit about what the Bible says, how much more are we supposed to be respectful of God and his people by not speaking ugly or telling inappropriate jokes or whatever, you know, just being... Because when you are rude and disrespectful to one of God's people, you're showing disrespect to God. But either way. <coughs> so my point in saying all that is we have to do our part to behave like we know we're supposed to. Even if we're, and I know we're not supposed to just be anywhere, but sometimes you can't help it. And sometimes the Lord sends you into places, us Christians. He will send you into a place. <coughs> that may not be a good place, but it's where God wants you because he's going to use you. But while we're in there, we need to behave in such a way that people who see us can have respect for us. We need to show other people that God expects respect and that we expect respect, but we most definitely are supposed to show God the reverence and the respect that he deserves we shouldn't treat his grace and mercy lightly. <clears throat> and I, I, I'm going to tell you all another little story. Um, speaking of going into places, <clears throat> I don't frequent bars. I'm not, I, I just don't. Now, I'm, I'm not going to say I've never been in one. I have. There have been times that I've been in one for one thing or another. One time we were on a poker run and one of the stops, in fact, more than once I've been on poker runs where one of the stops is a poker, is a bar. And basically what you're doing is you're taking a break from riding, you go in, 
a lot of them get off and smoke their cigarettes and they go inside and get a beer or whatever. Well, I can sit in a bar all day long and I'm not drinking a beer. That's just, that's to me, I, I don't understand the concept of paying for something that tastes like that. I tasted some one time and I thought, no, I don't want any more. But I can sit in a bar all day long and not drink beer. I'll drink a soft drink or I'll drink a glass of tea or glass of water or whatever. And anybody that knows me knows that I don't drink. <laughs> or if they know me very well, they know that I don't drink. But I would still need to be careful if I'm in a bar, even if it's for a poker run, I would need to <laughs> behave in such a way that I'm not disrespecting, showing disrespect to myself or to God. And I have heard it said that, um, and there are lots of different motorcycle clubs. There are some that are based on your military service. There are some that are based on, um, like there's some that are policemen and there's some that are firemen. And um, There's an excellent group that has a chapter in Montgomery and it's called the Buffalo Soldiers. And very high standard for being in it. You have to be, first of all, you have to be black. And you have to be a professional. You can't just join because you're black. You have to be a professional of some sort, a lawyer, doctor, something. You have to be a role model for the people in your community. And they're named after a black, an all-black army, I believe it's army unit. <clears throat> That were, and that's, they named themselves the Buffalo Soldiers. And when when the Buffalo so Shoulders show up for like the Christmas parade, you know they are on the place because they come in, they almost ride in formation. They're they've got their uniforms on. I, I don't know if you call them uniforms, but their their outfits they're beautiful, and you know they are on the place. Uh, Randy was real good friends with one of the guys that, that used to be in the leadership. I don't know if he still is, but. Um, and then there are Christian motorcycle clubs and riding groups and ministries and that kind of thing. And so anyway, I heard the story once that um, a couple of guys that had the Christian patches on their back, I don't know if they call themselves in a ministry or if it was just a Christian patch. They were on, had a Christian patch on the back of their vest, and they were sitting in a bar, and they were drinking and cutting up and flirting with the waitress and just acting like regular folks. And this other motorcycle club that was not a Christian club saw them and saw how they were behaving. And two of the members came up to them and said, we don't know if you stole those vests or if you just not who you say you are, but if you don't get up and get out right now because of how you're behaving, not because they were Christians in the bar, but because of how they were behaving and supposedly be Christians. They said, we don't know if you're not really the person's supposed to be wearing that vest, but for who, whoever you are, you're going to get up and leave this place or we're going to throw you out. They, as heathens, as I like to call them, did not want God disrespected. And so they they told them, you either get up, get out, or we're putting you out. And they, I'm pretty sure they didn't get towards. So we as Christians have to represent ourselves that we are who we say we are and who God says we are. If we can't be respectful to God, how can we expect anybody else to want to listen to us? That was the point of that story. So I would encourage you to remember this week who we are, who God is, and how we can show Him respect so the people around us can not only respect us, but respect God. Um, we've got to be true to Him, even if it makes somebody uncomfortable. I mean... I don't think we're supposed to be belligerent and get into arguments with people, but when somebody questions us, we do need to be willing to give an answer. We need to know who we are and who God is so we can give an answer. So anyway, that's that's all I have for tonight. I'm glad y'all joined us. I'm glad that we're back up here. We're trying to get back onto a schedule. Um, so like I said, be closed tomorrow. But other than that, I'm doing my best to get back onto a regular schedule. So thank y'all for joining us. And we would love to have you here next week. The lady that was supposed to speak tonight has been sick. And so we're going to give her a couple of weeks to recover before she's back. But I do have a guest speaker in mind for next week. In fact, over the next several weeks, I've got several people. Um, I, I don't, don't ever mind speaking, but I know that the Lord has called other people to be up here. And I want, I want y'all to be able to hear them. So with that said, thank y'all for, for joining us. 
and the ones that are here, thank y'all for being here. And uh, we love y'all, and we would ask you to come see us this next week. Good evening.